All right. Getting started with Python, week five. We are going to introduce classes and objects. We're going to use PyTest to refactor our existing tests to use classes. And we're going to talk about using variable args, uh, args and quargs. That quargs uh, should have two asterisks in front of it, and object should probably have an S at the end. But anyway, that's our slide for today. <laughs> we don't have anything else because it's all out of sorts. So let's jump into our code, right? So as we left off, um, we were last week we were talking about the different knights in King Arthur's court relating to um, the Monty Python and the Holy Grail. What I'd like to do, but I don't think I could get away with for copyright reasons, is to include clips from the movie um, as we cover different topics. Um, so we were checking different knights and different colors, and we had a database of knights that we were storing in a, it looks like we don't have the actual original here, uh, in a, uh, a list of dictionaries. So let me go ahead and recreate that. And I'm going to just create a folder here. And uh, I'll create the folder uh, in here. And we will call it. Uh, all right. Um, we'll call this week five. And we'll start Visual Studio Code in that folder. We'll close this old one, make it big, make it bigger. All right, so week five, uh, let's, let's create a, a database of knights, right? Uh, so we're just going to create a file and call it knights.py. Now, here's our knights. We want to have knights, and we're going to start off with knights. Uh, as a list, right? Uh, an empty list can be defined using square brackets. Um, and then we can add knights to this, right? And we can append Lancelot and uh, Galahad and uh, Bedivere and Robin, just like we did last week. Now we want to create a test for our knights, and we're going to evolve this from just a list to a dictionary, to a list of dictionaries, and then to classes. So the easiest way to do this is we want to create a file called knightstest.py. Um, in PyTest, um, it will automatically find files that end or start with test, and it will look also for files uh, or for functions in these files uh, that start or end with the word test. So I want to create a, a function called def, well, called called uh, test nights, but we're going to define our function starting with def, right? And we can just assert, the first thing we want to assert, we want to assert that nights uh, is not empty. Um, so what we can do to start off that, we can assert that the length of nights is not equal to zero. All right. Now, I guess I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to introduce using modules today. Uh, we could import nights like so. And let's let's run our test and see what happens. Now, note when we just run our code like this. Um, let's see. I think. Uh, well, if we do import dot slash night. Uh, All right, let's junk that. Uh, I'm debugging here. All right, list append takes exactly one argument. Uh, oh. 
All right, we're going to learn together just because uh, I want to do this. I want to append all of our information here. So I'm going to search uh, add items to list in Python. All right. So we can append one item. That's what my error message is complaining about. I'm trying to append more than one. Um, so I want to add more than one by appending. So what I want to do instead of append is I want to extend my list. So let's go back over there and uh, knights extend. And now we're going to run our Knights test again. Um, I need to extend it by passing in a new list. So I can do that by putting the brackets around this. I could alternately do Knights.append Lancelot, uh, Knights.append Galahad. Etc. That's going to take longer than this. So I'm going to create a new list of knights, add it to my empty list of knights. And now when I uh, when I run this, uh, there we go. I run it and there's no errors, but nothing happens. Let's let's make sure our test fails, right? Um, so I'm going to remove this knights extends. So knights is going to be an empty list. It should fail our test because I'm asserting the length of knights is not equal to zero and it should be zero based on what we have written here. So let's run this code and see, no failures. Uh, the reason why is because we're not calling test knights at all. Uh, we're defining a function, but we're not calling it. One way we can call the function is we can call test nights like this. So I'm referencing the function I defined above, and then these empty parentheses calls the function. Now, if we run it, we get an assertion error, but we don't need to do that with PyTest. PyTest can find our tests. So I can type PyTest. Let me make the font a little bigger. All right. So we can call PyTest here, and it will find our test. And now we have some handy output. So we get assert 0 not equals 0, where 0 equals length. And we actually see the source code for what's happening. And we have knightstest.py fails. That's the file we have here. So it's saying, hey, our test failed not just assertion error, which is what we get by calling the function directly. We're going to build on uh, PyTest functionality. So let's fix this. How are we going to fix it? We're going to add knights to our list of knights. All right. So we can run this again, and I'm going to run it over here, just because I think it's easier to read, and it passed. But we're not sure what passed. So we can do pytest dash s will actually print our output and dash v will be verbose and tell us what passed. So we can see that our function, right, our class or our file, I should say, we're not into classes yet. Our file is knights test.py and the function inside that is test knights. Um, so Here's how we see that. All right, so now let's do something else, right? We want to change our knights uh, so that we can get their name and their favorite color. So um, we're going to assert that knight sub zero or, or knights sub zero uh, not equal none. It passed, 
but that's because it's just a string, right? We can uh, we can print uh, here. Let's let's get our knight, right? Uh, so we'll get an individual knight equals knight sub zero. Now we run this and uh, oops, I, did I print that? No, I didn't print that. We want to print our knight. And see what's going on. All right. So now we can see it printed here on this line, Lancelot. We only see the printed output if we have the dash S, which means don't capture input. It means print. So we can see here we have Knight's test passed, but we don't print out Lancelot. So remember, we want to get their name and we want to get their favorite color. So we can store this in different ways, right? We can store it as a um, as a dictionary. So rather than doing knights.extend, we will create a dictionary of knights. And this is review from last week. And we'll have Lancelot and his favorite color is blue. And Galahad's favorite color is green. We should make that Gawain's favorite color is green. Gawain and the Green Knight. Bedivere's favorite color is, uh, I don't know, black. And Robin's favorite color is yellow. Brave Sir Robin. All right, so now we have a dictionary of knights and their favorite colors. So now we can assert that, uh, so first we're asserting the knights. Now we can, um, we can print the knight and uh, let's see what happens just with this. And we want the dash S again so we can see what's printed out. Um, and we can see that knight key error, uh, knights sub zero, the index zero of knights doesn't work. Uh, the reason for that is because knights is a dictionary, not an ordered list. So we can um, do differently. We can do knights.get, and we can get it by index, right? We've seen that happen. And it returns none because, um, well, because they're not. Uh, indexed by ID. If I had a knight sub uh, with zero and uh, right, I can add another knight and I can add zero as the key to this dictionary. Remember a dictionary has a key or a name and a value, or you can think of it as, as a word and a definition to think in a dictionary sense. So now we do this. And uh, knight sub zero is Sir not appearing in this film. Uh, but that's not what we want to do. Uh, we want to get their favorite color. So let's go ahead and remove that. Um, our length of knights still works, right? It's passing. And we can even, uh, we can print before our cert. So we can print the length of knights. Now, normally, length, length will throw a string error if we have knights plus length of knights, um, or it'll throw a cast error. Can only concatenate string, not int to string. So the way I would fix that is string length of knights. Or if I just don't have a string, I can just print length of knights. But now we see test knights, knights is five, okay. The next test we wanna do is we want to uh, assert that uh, knights sub Robin. So we wanna know that Robin's favorite color is blue. Uh, um, and then if we run that, 
we get an error. Assertion error, yellow is uh, not equal to blue. So it asserts on yellow equals blue, and it expected blue, but it found yellow. And I keep going the wrong way on that. I'll just minimize that. Um, and that is because Robin's favorite color is yellow, not blue. So we can correct our test here very easily by changing that to yellow. And I should be consistent in my quotes, right? Single or double quotes both work. And I can run PyTest uh, in my terminal in Visual Studio Code too, and not flip windows. But I want more screen and real estate for seeing what's happening. So we, we've asserted that Robin's uh, is yellow, but that's a little unintuitive, right? What we want to do instead is now we're going to refactor our uh, nights and we're going to make it a list of dictionaries. And these dictionaries are going to have a name. So it would be name colon Lancelot. And comma. Uh, Favorite color, I'll just do color, colon blue. So now I have a dictionary that's defining Sir Lancelot. Um, his name is Lancelot, his favorite color is blue. And I can do the same with the rest of these knights as well. And we will do uh, Galahad. His favorite color is going to be, what I say, green. Mm, Bedivere. His favorite color is, um, I said black. Let's go red. That's easier to type. And uh, not Lancelot, but Robin will be yellow. And I'll just line these up with extra spaces to make it easier to read. All right, so now, oh, I need to fix this. My square bracket doesn't match my curly bracket. Now it does. So now I have a list of dictionaries. And um, so what I'm going to do is outside my test, I'm going to exercise, well, I'm going to do it inside the test. I was going to like print uh, nights right here and then just run that. Um, parentheses does not match parentheses. Oh, I forgot my commas. So, right, it's a list, dictionary, 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 and the last dictionary doesn't need a comma on the end, but it doesn't hurt. So I can run nights, and and now, right, this this just gives me a quick sanity check. If I run nights by itself. It doesn't do anything, but it doesn't throw any errors. Now, if I run night test the same, and now it prints nights, but it doesn't run my test. But we can still run that with PyTest. And now we see here, type error, list indexes must be integers or slices, not string. And that's because we refactored. We went from a list to a dictionary. So let's go ahead and fix our night test. So we want to say um, nights sub Robin. Uh, we want to do night equals night sub Robin. And then let's print night. We'll do selected night. dot name, or not dot name, uh, square brackets, index name. And we're going to run this. Okay, we get our list of nights. And now we are going to, notice we don't have an assertion here. Let's add an assert. Uh, assert uh, night dot name, uh, night sub name. I'm getting ahead of myself here, is 
equal to uh, Robin. So this is a little sanity check. Uh, two equals is equal to one equals his assignment. All right, so we've got knights sub Robin. This will give us one knight. And we're now saying knight sub name is Robin. And looking at this here, uh, oops. Uh, we want to reference knight sub three is Robin. Zero, one, two, three. Do a sanity check, no error. All right, now I think we're ready to run our test. We run PyTest and selected knight is Robin. Our test passes. We can make sure this um, works, that it's actually testing the correct knight by changing the index of the knight. So knight sub one will be Galahad. We run this again, and we can see selected knight is Galahad but our test failed because we're expecting Galahad to equal Robin. We got our index wrong. That's okay. Uh, so let's change this back to three. That proves that our test is doing what we want it to do. All right. So now we want to go through and we want to go for night in uh, nights, colon, um, and then we need to indent, right? There's a colon. So there's a block of text after our for loop. These are the things we want to execute for each night in our for loop. We indent that to show that. Other programming languages like C and Java uh, might use curly braces instead of indentation. Python uses indentation to uh, indicate where a block is. So you can see another example here. We have def test nights, we're creating a function. The block inside of our function is indented one level. For night in nights, we're creating another block for our for loop, and we are indenting the, and Python is particular about indentation. The goal here is Python wants to reduce uh, the characters you have to type, so they wanna get rid of extra curly braces and semicolons, or do end blocks or whatever. Um, and secondarily, Python wants to force you to uh, format your code in a way that's more readable, and indentation is the way they do that. All right, so now we're going to go through each knight in our list, and we're going to print their name, and we're going to make sure that their name is correct. Hmm, I was expecting this to fail because, well, the knight's name is not always Robin. So let's go ahead and remove that and run our loop. So we see selected knight Lancelot, selected knight Galahad, selected knight Bedivere, selected knight Robin. So why is it that it passes? Let's check it out. Ah, it didn't pass. So assert that Lancelot equals Robin. So we don't have a good way of checking this other than if we know uh, all of our knights. Um, we can get all the keys in a dictionary, right? So we can, um, I do not want to do a list comprehension right now. We'll save that for later. Okay, so we're just going to go back to testing one knight. And we're going to fix the indentation so it lines up again. Run our test one more time to make sure nothing's broken. And we're good. Now, you may be thinking, this is a little bit unwieldy. Uh, and there might be a better way to do it. Uh, so this here, um, if you've seen JavaScript or you've used JSON, uh, JSON is a text format that uh, looks very much like this. An object is defined with uh, curly braces, start and finish. Keys are uh, listed as a string in quotes, a colon, and then a value. And arrays are also listed with square brackets. So I could actually, um, we could say that Bedivere has multiple favorite colors, and we could create a list here. 
beneath that. So he likes red and he likes black. Um, which is kind of tricky, but let's put him at the end of the list. Um, well, that's going to break my test. All right, so there we are. What Everything so far has been kind of a review uh, on using PyTest, using lists and dictionaries. So now we're going to learn about classes. Classes in Python are a way to group related data and functionality similar to many other programming languages in an object. So I already talked about in, in JSON or in JavaScript, this curly brackets defines an object. But uh, there's another way to refer to it so that I don't have to know the right keys, and that's a class. So I'm going to take my knights and I'm going to make a class. Now, we've talked about a function. You define a function with the def or define keyword, you define a class with the class keyword. Um, bit inconsistent, I, I prefer uh, the way class is defined. Uh, so you create a class, you use the class keyword, and then you create a name for your class, in this case, Knight. By convention, a class is usually capitalized. Um, and so what, what does an individual Knight have? Well, an in, oops, we want a colon here, not parentheses. This is not Java. Uh, we want to have a name, and we want to have a favorite color. And we're going to set these by default to none. Now, this is not normally the way, but this is a way to simplify it. Um, but there is something else that a class has. And that is a class has a function in it called init. It's underscore, underscore, init. Uh, or they call this dunder uh, for double underscore. So you've got dunder init. Um, not every class has to have an init function. But an init function is roughly analogous to a constructor in other languages. It's not technically a constructor in Python. But init runs at class initialization. So when the class is instantiated or created, init is called. So we create a, a function called underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. Now, it can take no arguments, but it actually, to refer to the class by convention, we pass in a variable called self. A class has a, a variable. That's the first argument to every function in the class. And uh, that is able to be referenced in other functions. So this is like a pointer to itself. Um, if you've used JavaScript, you might be familiar with, uh, if you do it on the browser side, the document object or the window object is the base object. Um, but self refers to this instance of this class uh, in Java. It actually uses the word this uh, as a keyword to reference this instance of this class. In Python, I, I could type this, but by convention, we use the word self, referring to itself. Uh, and I'm going to say I'm sir plus self dot name is how we're going to uh, print our init function. Okay, so let's go back to our knights test and let's create another test, right? Let's call it def test knights uh, class. Now, we also need to import not only knights, we need to from knights import knigget knight with a capital K. So we've got two different objects in this knights class. We've got our knights. Uh, list of dictionaries. This is our knight base, as I called it last week. And then we have this class definition uh, called knight, capitalized. Um, this should probably be in its own file. So we'll go ahead and move that there. Um, we'll call it knight.py. And we define knight here. And so now, um, 
And, and let's actually, uh, I'm, I'm going to put, I'm going to make another test called night test just to uh, distinguish that, right? Um, so what I want to do is I want to test that I can create a new night. Um, first, we need to import uh, night from night. Uh, Oh, <laughs> got that backwards. From night, import night. Uh, from notice, lowercase night is our file name, and uppercase night is our class name. Just like in night test, we're importing um, a, a night's test. Um, I want to uh, I want to make night's test a little more. Obvious. So I'm going to I'm going to change nights to I'm going to rename my file. And technically, it's not the file we're referring to; it's the package. But a, a file is by default a package. So I'm going to call this my night base. Oops. Uh, there we go. Night base .py. Let's make sure our uh, night uh, nights test. So what I want to do is I want to rename this uh, night base test. And uh, and all I have to do to fix this is from nights, change that to from night base, import nights. All right, let, so let's run our tests and see if uh, everything's working good. All right, so our night base, not our nights test, is passing, right? Robin is uh, our selected knight, and his favorite color is yellow. So now we have this separate class, right? Uh, we can say goodbye to our night base for now. We have night, which defines our class, and we have night test, which tests our class. Um, and uh, we, can, we can create an instance of our class, right? So we're gonna create a, uh, now we've got a name collision here. Um, oh no, we're okay. Uh, night equals, now, Notice I, I, I'm importing capitalized night. Um, here, let's, let's, uh, let's give our night a, a better name. Robin is a night, is the way you can think of it, right? Uh, we're creating an instance of night, and that instance of night we're creating, we're giving him a name, and we're calling him Robin. If he was an enchanter, we might call him Tim. Uh, but anyway, so Robin is a knight, and um, that's all we can do with our knight right now is, right, we've, we've got this init method, which is called when we create our knight. So let's run our knight test and see what happens. Now, I don't want to run our knight base test. I just want to run knight test. So I can specify this file name, and it will only run the tests in that file. All right. So we see uh, an assertion, object has no attribute name. Now I defined name here as a variable, but I'm not referring to it correctly. So I need to do self.name and self.color. I don't want to introduce uh, um, class variables and instance variables and decorators. So Rather than doing that, I'm going to, uh, in my init method, I'm going to pass a name and I'm going to pass their favorite color. Um, and now I can reference self.name equals name and self.color equals color. So I'm sir, I'm gonna make this an F or a format string. So I can say I'm sir, and then I can reference it, sir self.name. And my favorite color is, now I think I mentioned this briefly, if I put an F before my quotes, I can then use the dollar sign brace to refer to a variable and it'll print that. It's just called a format string or an F string for short. I can refer to that as self.color. Uh, and as actually, as a matter of fact, since we're passing 
name and color as variables. I don't even have to refer to those yet. So I'm going to ignore that for now. Take it a step back. And I just want to refer to name and color. Right, and now we can run our night test. And we can see, oh, it's missing two positional arguments, name and color. So to create a night, we need to pass in two arguments. And this is where I wanted to get about talking about uh, functions and arguments. So let me hop over here and I'm gonna open up IPython for a minute. So I can create a function and, uh, oops, uh, forgot my thing. But let's call our function something else. Let's call it greeting, greeting. right? Uh, going back to the old days. All right, so we've got a greeting and we can call our greeting function. And that works. We can add an argument and redefine our greeting function to take a name. And we can make that say hi, and we'll use an F, uh, lowercase f. I said lowercase. Um, hmm, doesn't detect it. Right, and we can do hi, dollar sign, bracket, name. We'll make this a little fancier. Hello there name uh yeah that's good enough now i can call my greeting and it says greeting is missing one positional argument so i can say aaron is my name and then it says hello there oops uh i don't need the uh, dollar sign i'm mixing that up with a uh, different templating like in JavaScript. All right. So now when I call my greeting, hello there, Aaron. And looking at my function, um, what if I wanted to pass um, my favorite color as well? So I'm redefining my function to have name and color. I can also add, uh, I see you like color. Right. Now when we call greeting with our name, it's missing one required positional argument, color. Um, well, that's easy to fix. We can call greeting Aaron, and my favorite color is orange. And it works. Hello there, Aaron. I see you like orange. What if we don't always want to pass in our favorite color? The step there is we can redefine our greeting function. Um, all right, let me uh, back up so we can see it. So I can make color an optional argument by giving it a default value. Uh, I can give it a default value of none. And then I will change this here. It says, hello there, Aaron. And then the next line, it will print, uh, 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 I see you like color. So it's just printing this on the next line. And you'll see why I wanna do that in a minute. And in a minute, once I have my code formatted properly, now it recognizes that. And I can do greeting Aaron orange. Hello there, Aaron. I see you like orange. Now, if I leave orange off, I see you like none. I can fix that. I can have a default color and say my default color is blue. I don't need to save a file because I'm just using IPython. Now, if I call greeting with just Aaron, it says, hi, hello there, Aaron. I see you like blue. The default color is blue. I can override that by, um, I can pass in orange. And when I call greeting, it says, hello there, Aaron. I see you like orange. I can also choose whether or not I want to pass an argument by name or value. So what if I did this? Um,
right? I would get, hello there, orange. I see you like Aaron. Well, that's not what we want to do. Python has something called named arguments. Um, so um, I can actually, I'll make my green and I can say color equals orange and name equals Aaron. So I can do them in a different order. And now it works. Hello there, Aaron. I see you like orange. And um, I can also reference arguments that are not in the list. So I'm going to add a conditional statement and I'm going to say, oops. Um, So I'm redefining my function again, right? And I'm going to say, if age, not name, age, print f, uh, are you really age years old? And uh, I'm just call my greeting right now. Name age is not defined. So I don't have it in me yet, but I can pass age. Uh, as a variable. Okay, so positional arguments must follow keyword arguments. So let, let's go back to the original, Aaron, orange, and 42. Greeting takes from one to two positional arguments, but three were given. So that's because we're not defining that in our function, right? So we're looking at our function. We wanna also have age here. Now, this is gonna give us another error and we'll see in a minute. Oh, parameter with a default falls, a parameter without a default. So what I need to do is I need to define my greeting and I have name, age, and then color. And now when I call greeting, Aaron, orange, 42. I see you like 42. Are you really orange years old? I messed that up. Uh, so let's get these in the right order. Okay, so that's all good. Um, but we can also, um, remember we don't need, uh, well, we do, but uh, we need to fix it so that age and, um, and color are not required. So I actually, um, we'll do age equals none here. And we call greeting Aaron 42. Uh, and it, it works. And I can actually, now I can do color equals orange and not pass my age. And it won't print my age. Hello there, Aaron. I see you like orange. Um, I, I think I don't have time to get into classes more and cover the, uh, the var args. And the uh, the quarks. Um, but the idea is that we can uh, define our function. Um, I want to get to my latest version that has, okay. So I can, pass in star args and what I can do here is I can do uh, color equals I'm not sure if I need the star there or not um, oh I wanted age right
I'm going to do the same thing if color. Okay, uh, I, I thought I had the suspicion I didn't need the star here. All right, so now we're defining our function again. It looks happy. Um, come on. I just want to be able to see our function code when we call it. All right, now I can do greeting, and I can just call Aaron. Ooh, uh, I I would need to check if arg sub zero works. So, um, but the idea is that it it uh it will take multiple variations on that. So, if I pass Aaron forty two in orange, it will work um, because there's arg sub zero and arg sub one. Now there's also keyword args. And that takes two stars. So quargs is keyword args. And now what we would do is we would do args sub age. Um, and, and actually, I don't need to specify them there. I can say. If quargs. Now quarks is just a convention. I uh, I could call that uh, I could call that kittens if I wanted. But keyword args is a convention you will see in uh, a lot of production code. So if if quarks sub color then we could actually print uh, Now this is getting kind of kind of hairy in terms of what we're putting in this code. So we might actually do this. We might actually just say plus quargs sub color. Um, and then we would do, uh, oh, I guess if we do this here. Quargus, I can't type. All right, and then I can do greeting Aaron 42 oranges. Greeting takes one positional argument, but two, but three were given. Now I can spec, I can, uh, I can now just get the name. Ooh, uh, so I, I would have to do if quargs and quargs.color. So I'm checking if quargs exists. There we go. And now it just says, Hello, Aaron, because looking at our code here, uh, well, we didn't have any keyword args, so there's no color and there's no age. We don't print those things. But I can also optionally pass as arguments nay or age equals uh, 42 and color equals orange. I should really learn to be consistent in my my quotes and there we go and we can do color and age um the nice thing about doing functions like this is i can pass in whatever number of arguments i want i can actually even pass in a list and this is what i wanted to get to or, or not a list but a dictionary uh by referencing it so let me grab my dictionary of knights. Uh, or I'll just grab a single knight from my knight base.
And I'm going to actually throw in his age here too, which he's uh, 77 years old. All right. So now I can uh, do a greeting on um, uh, I need name. Uh, so well, I, I could do a night sub name. And then I can actually pass in a, a, a reference. So the ampersand is the reference to my night. Uh, is it a star then? Shooting takes one positional argument. I need two asterisks. It got multiple values for name. Okay, so. Can I just pass this in and that will work? Let's see. There we go. Now, rather than uh, greeting name, age, and whatever, I can pass in a reference with these two stars, a keyword reference to my dictionary, and it can use it. You guys got a few minutes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's look at our night class. Right, we've got a class, we've got a name, we'll even throw in an age here. Actually, I don't want to type, so we're just going to do name and color. Um, so, for our night test, we're going to call this, and we're going to pass in uh, a name, Robin. And we're going to pass in his favorite color, which is yellow. And what should this do? When we call our night uh, initialization with this function, it'll call the init function, which is right. The, the double underscore is kind of a magic function that has uh, a predefined activity when it's called. Uh, in this case, it's when you initialize your class. Um, and Python is a bit weird in terms of the way working with classes and object orientation is different. Uh, number one, you have this init function or method. Sometimes functions are called methods if they're a method or an action on a class. And then you also have to pass this self instance to the class. And the reason is because Python originally didn't have classes, but behind the scenes um, to make Python object oriented, they did it. And so that's why you see this weird def underscore init passing in self as the first argument to a function. Because, right, there's, you could just uh, theoretically have a function like this. Um, but the way Python was originally written, it didn't work that way. So it created the magic function init, which you can think of like a constructor or an initializer. Um, and it passes a reference to itself. Okay, so first thing we wanna do, is we want to run this test and it should print, hello, I'm Robin and my favorite color is yellow when we run it as a test. So let's go ahead and do, uh, yeah, let's do it here. Python, uh, or no, py, not Python, pi test. And we're gonna do dash SV so we can see our printout. Uh, and then we'll do a night test, that py. And we can see here, oh, uh, Remember, I, I forgot to uh, take these dollar signs out because those are JavaScript templates, not Python templates. I'm always switching back and forth. All right, so now we try this again. PyTest passes and it says, I'm Sir Robin and my favorite color is yellow. Well, we don't wanna do that every time we wanna create a test. We wanna do that every time a knight uh, introduces or announces themselves. So let's take this out of our init function and create another function. Uh, yeah, we'll just call it announce. Now you'll notice a couple things here. Number one, uh, well actually, uh, number one, expected indented block. So we have an init function that doesn't do anything. Um, so I'm just going to create a comment by putting a bunch of single quotes that satisfies. So now I have an init method that um, 
doesn't do anything, but it it the interpreter understands that that's part of the init function. If I take this out, it says, wait a minute, I have a function, I have a block, I see this colon here, and the indentation is wrong after that. So just by doing that, I could just, uh, I could also leave a comment. Uh, actually, nope, a comment won't work. That's stripped out before that. But I can leave a, a documentation string. So I can say empty uh, init method. We'll call it function. Okay. And then the next thing is you can see here name is underlined and color is underlined. So color is not defined and name is not defined. Well, that's because we need to refer to self.name and self.color. So I'm referring to myself. I'm re I want to know the name and the color of the night class, or rather of the instance of the night class we have. So let's try this out, right? If I if I run my night test, it passes, but it doesn't print out anything. It's not calling announce. Why is that? Because while we're passing name and color into the init function, we're not doing anything with it. So now this is the next thing I want to show. And this is probably a good place to stop after we do this. Well, I can do self.name equals name. So the variable passed as an argument is being saved in this self object, which refers to the instance of my class. And I can do the same thing with color. Oops, self.color. And this is how you typically add variables to an object in Python. So I'm going to run PyTest here. And now it passes. Oh, the reason it's not calling announce now, so I actually failed on the demo there, is because I'm not actually uh, calling night of Robin dot announce. And notice I'm not testing anything, so this test can never fail. Um, so let's do this. Ro let's assert Robin. Uh, and now we can see Robin has this uh, color is equal to yellow. Uh, notice before, right, when we were referring to uh, our knights um, in our knight base, Right, we would have to, uh, let's look at our night base test. We would have to do knights sub two and then knight bracket name. Or we could say knights sub two sub name. And I believe that would work. Uh, what is this night base test? Um, oh, uh, because here. Now, so right, this is this is actually quite awkward to do, although uh, this this is actually a very convenient way to initialize data, right? It's it's clear to the eyes, it's clear to what's happening. We have a list, a list of things. What things do we have? We have a list of dictionaries, and we have the keys, name and color and age and whatever else um, that's available. So that that's actually really nice. And this format here uh, is very, very similar to the JSON format that so many websites use. Uh, you request, uh, uh, we could call it uh, a web service that, that could be called the night base service, and it would return this block of code exactly, uh, most likely. Uh, there are some subtle differences, um, but it, it would return code in this case, the same code we see here that can be interpreted by JavaScript uh, and rendered on a website. We'll get to rendering websites later as well. If you want to learn some web development on top of testing. Um, but notice how here we can just do robin.color as opposed to knights sub two uh, sub color, um, right? And we could. Uh, do the same thing. Knight sub two. Uh,
And uh, wait, I'll just do this back in here. Run PyTest on night base test. And we get assert yellow equals blue. Uh, we can change that uh, because yellow doesn't equal blue. So I run pipe test on night base, and our night base is both checking the name and the color here. In our night test, we can do, just do assert robin dot color equals yellow, and we can assert that uh, robin dot name equals robin. Um, remember, two equal signs is equal to one equal sign is assignment. We can't reassign that variable. We run this and we're good. Selected night is Robin. Favorite color is yellow. Oops, wrong test. Uh, <laughs> night test, not night base test. All right, and it passed. I'm Sir Robin and my favorite color is yellow. We're good. Checks out. Um, and if we were to break this by making it blue, we get the same error. Assert that yellow is equal to blue. It's not. So we get a failure. Um, let me see. There's probably a lot more that I want to cover, but let's stop here and give it a quick review. So we, we talked about how we can pass in different arguments to functions and why that's handy. But then we talked about how we can create a class. And a class can have self variables. So an instance of a class, let, let me demonstrate that one more time. Uh, I'm going to test another knight and I'm going to make, uh, gonna make uh, Lance and I'm gonna make his, uh, I'm gonna make a new knight called Lancelot. And his favorite color is blue. And Lance is going to announce And Lance, uh, yeah, we'll run that test and watch it fail. And so we see we're expecting Lance a lot here, so. And it passes. So we, we've got two checks here. I'm Sir Robin and my favorite color is yellow. I'm Sir Lance a lot and my favorite color is blue. Um, just to make this look easier to read, I'm gonna throw an empty print statement here because by default, print goes on the same line as the output. All right, so now we see I'm Sir Robin, or I'm Sir Lance, Sir Lance a lot, and uh, it's cool, it passed, because I have the correct values in my assertions. This probably looks like we're just retyping things, um, but if we're getting a knight from a database or a web service, um, and we're asserting its values, then uh, it makes a lot more sense than just typing this here and typing this here. Because right now it just looks like we're shuffling words around on the page, right? Um, but the idea is here is I can create multiple instances of a knight. Now our knight object um, is roughly analogous to our dictionary, but um, it's easier to reference, and it has some other capabilities that we can do. For instance, we can, um, I'll do one last thing. I'm going to say, I'm going to check in my init method if name is equal to Robin and color is not equal to yellow. then um actually we'll, we'll go ahead and put that back up there just for formatting then uh right sir robin in my python the holy grail uh goes to the bridge keeper who says what is your name my name is sir robin what is your quest to find the holy grail what is your favorite color blue i mean yellow ah and he gets pitched over because he he got the third question wrong. So that's the reference here. So we're raising an exception here for Robin if his color is not yellow. 
back to our night test. We want to test that that happens. Um, we're going to go over here and we're going to exit out of PyTest. We're going to do PyTest, night test. Oops, we need our SV. Uh, oh, I did Python, not PyTest. And it passes, well, because Robin's favorite color is yellow. What if we try and create Robin with his favorite color is red? I'm Sir Robin and my favorite color is yellow. Ah, it failed. Uh, assertion error uh, asserts that yellow equals, wait a minute, it, di it didn't fail the way that I wanted it to. Uh, oh, because um, I want it to fail when I'm creating my knight, not when I'm asserting. My own mistake. All right. Now we get the ah, exception must be derived. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, oh, I need to. Uh, I need to type. Uh, where are we? Night, night, night. Raise uh, exception. There we go. A little bonus. Um, there we go. Exception. Ah, because Robin can't lie about his favorite color when he's getting created. Uh, anyway, that's it for today. Uh, I know it was really scattered. I didn't have a lot of time to prepare, uh, but I wanted to introduce classes. Um, I wanted to compare them to dictionaries and lists. I wanted to point out function uh, Variable number of args and keyword args, which are, are named arguments that have a name and a value. And that's what I wanted to cover today in the scattered way. Uh, I think I did so, but uh, we'll build on that next week. And I think, do we want to try uh, learning Selenium next week? Yeah, you too, Ben. All right. So next week, uh, we, we, right, we've been covering a lot of basics of Python, and I think uh, because we also covered import, that I think we're ready that we could create our first Selenium test. So, All right. Good. Thank you so much. All and right. You have a good I'll weekend. see you later. Okay. Have a good weekend. Oh, you too. Thank you. Bye, everybody.